So we now look at a compilation example using GCC. So GCC is a suite of compilers developed by the GNU project and is a key, key part of the, the GNU toolchain. It's very common and it's probably the most well and the most popular compiler that's used. It supports both C and C++ you know, as well as other languages as well. It's been ported to a large range of instruction architectures including most popular embedded systems platforms you can get um, you know, compilers for kind of microcontrollers for different PCs and so on. So in this example we're going to look at using command line tools which are often used to develop software. But so this is where you actually got to kind of type out the commands a bit like DOS prompt on Windows. But then you can also get what we call IDEs or integrated development environments. So this is where you'd actually you know this is a piece of software that you can write the code in and do the compilation all in one environment. But we're going to use the command line tools for these just to make it you know it's easier for you to see than the actual compilation process that goes on. So in this example we'll just compile a simple hello world as an example. So whenever you start learning a new language, hello world is the you know this is where you start, you just write simple code what just prints the message to the screen. So in this example we've used a text editor, we've typed this code in here, again don't worry about the details, you know we pick this up over the over the rest of the course. So we've typed out our computer code and then we've saved that in this main.cpp file. So from this extension we know that this is a C++ uh, computer source code. So the code it simply displays this message on the screen and it uses this um, C8 command to the output. So we need to this this command is actually part of this input output library what's called IO stream. So to use this command we need to include IO stream. So IO stream is a library so we need to include that to be able to use C8. You know, all um, C, C++ code starts in a main function so we always have this main function so the kind of start of the function is the open curly bracket and then there's this close so that our code goes inside of this main function so we'll cover all the details later in the course but now I just want to look at the actual compilation procedure so we've got our main.cpp file and now we need to compile it so because it's a cpp file we're going to use G++. So G++ is the name of a, a compiler for the C++ files. And then if it's just a if it's just a .c file, we would use GCC. So there are two different compilers for C source code and C++ source code. So to compile the main.cpp file, we'd run the following command on the command line. So you launch your terminal application. You just type in on the command line g main.cpp. So let's point out this the arrow here is just you often see this in the terminal to say this is the start of a new line. So this is not something that you type in, that will already be there. And then you would type in g space main.cpp. So you give it the name of the source file, and then g will then compile it. So it carries out these different stages of the compilation process. And it will create an executable file on Windows that's called a.exe. If you do it on Linux or Mac, you might end up with just a on its own or a.8. But you need to provide the name of the source file. And assuming there's no errors inside of it, it'll compile and you'll end up with this executable file, which you then run. So to run these, you have to put the dot forward slash in front of it. That's saying that tells the terminal program that this file is inside the current directory so dot means the current directory so it's run a dot exe it'll run that and hello world will appear on the screen so you can see very simple process you've got your source file you compile it you end up with the executable file and then you can run that but there's a bit more to it a, a dot exe is not you know, that's the kind of default file name, it's not very useful. We can actually give the output 
executable a different name using this dash or flag. So the things we type on the command line will often be called um, flags. So if you put dash o followed by a different name, that will essentially re that will essentially give the executable a specific file. So we'll say that's using this dash o flag. So the output flag. So this will do the same as it did before. It will compile the code that's in main.cpp and it'll create an executable called hello world.exe. So we can just execute that file. So now we won't end up with an a.exe file, we'll end up with a hello world.exe. So we can execute that code and we'll just get the same output again. But when you do this, you know, note that you cannot use spaces in the file name because it'll think you're typing in. Like if you've got the space in hello world for example, it'll think you're typing in two separate words. So you can either use what we call camel case here, so you just put an uppercase to signify a new world, or maybe an underscore in between. But you cannot use spaces. Well that when you do that command it'll just do the entire compilation process in one go. But we can actually stop and process at different parts so we can inspect these kind of um, interim stages if you will. So in that previous example we had to include, we had to use this uh, hash include preprocessor direct as it's called to include this IO stream library. So what the preprocessing stage, what that actually does, it'll get the contents of the IO stream library and it's just, it'll essentially put it inside of our main.cpp file. So we've, we've got a main.cpp PP file we've written and it'll just include everything what's in the IO stream library. So we can stop if you want to look at the output of the preprocessor, you can put this dash E flag in. So when you write the command do dash E, that'll stop the process after the preprocessing stage. So in that, that point it'll like put lots of code into the terminal and it'll be too much code for you to see. So we can use this. So we call this a pipe. So basically direct the output. So instead of the output being printed in the terminal, it'll be put inside main.main2.cpp. Run the preprocessor, it'll kind of pipe that into this output into this other file main2.cpp. So you could open main2.cpp now, open up in the text editor, and you'll see it's got over 24,000 lines of code. So our actual main, our original main file only can say one line of code inside the main function, the C8 hello world. But now we've included, after the preprocessor, it's going to get all the contents of the IO stream library and expand our original file to over 24,000 lines of code. So this shows how big this IO stream library is. And now we've got our kind of expanded source file. So we called that main2.cpp. So at that point, we could continue the compilation process. We could, uh, you know, do the dash o to create the output file, and that will then take the expanded source file and compile it to create hello world.exe. If we wanted to, though, we can also stop it after the compilation step. So this compilation step is where it converts our C++ source code into the assembly language file. So we can stop it after that using the this S flag. So on the when you type in your compile command you do dash S then the name of this file. Then you'll find then when you run that command you'll find it's created a, a file with a dot S extension so you'll end up with a file main dot S. So if you open that using a text editor, you'll find your hello world source code has been translated into assembly. So this will have the various commands, add, move, sub, and so on. And this can be interesting if you run, you can get the compilers for the different architectures. So you compile the same source code and you stop it after this step to see the assembly implementation. And if you open that up for different architectures, you'll see the different assembly instructions. So for example, the PC and the ARM master controllers, for example, have got different instruction set architectures, and the contents of this file will be different. So you've got the same .cpp file, but 
different dot s file because they've got you know that big compile for specific instructions that I have to put. So at that point then we've got um, you know we get our assembler source file. The next step then is the assembler process. That's where it goes through these assembler files and then converts it into this binary what we call object code. And you can stop if you want to kind of monitor this you can stop the compilation after this assembly stage by using this C flag. So again when you type your command in do dash C. So at this point here you could actually if you've done the previous examples you could type main dot S here instead of main.cpp and that will translate the assembly file into these binary ones and zeros or if you provide dot cpp you know g plus plus knows what file you put in so it'll do the if you do a sort deep dot cpp file it'll do the preprocessor then it'll do the, the compilation but if you provide a dot s file it knows that the preprocessing already has been done the compilation has already been done and it'll just do this assembly process so after this assembly stage you end up with this object file so you know these because they've got this dot o extension so in the directory you'll find this file called main dot o for example so you cannot actually open this at this point this is not a text file anymore this has been compiled into this kind of binary file these kind of raw ones and zeros so you cannot open it with a text editor so but you can get hex editors so you can open up these files and then inspect the actual uh, you know inspect the binary code the actual raw ones and zeros but these are typically well you can get to see from the name they're called hex editors so it normally displays the actual value in hexadecimal so at that point we've got our kind of binary ones and zeros of our code and the final step the linker that's where it links together the generated object code with any library object code to create this final executable. So this this last stage, you could um, you know you provide it your object file, and then the .o flag will tell it our final output. That will link it with any library code to create our final executable. As I said before, G does look at the uh, it looks at the input uh, file for the extension. So here it'll see that it's a dot o so it knows it only needs to do this final linking stage but if you provide you know the raw file main.cpp it'll know that it needs to do the entire compilation procedure so just to summarize those last stages with you know these are the kind of the actual individual steps so for example we'll do the preprocessor so this this first line's a preprocessor this will expand the file then you assemble oh, sorry that's so that's when you um, compile then we'll assemble and then finally we'll link that to create the final executable so you could do that individually but we don't typically do that you tend to just run one single compile command so this is where you give it the dot cpp file give it this dash o and then the name of the executable and then g plus plus will automatically do these four stages but we typically do not do each one of these individually we just do this one um, one final command but there's other we've seen the flags there to stop the process at different stages but often we can use other flags as well so dash wall this turns on any warnings about the code so if you've got some slight mistake with your code it'll create a warning so warnings are not as serious as errors so if you've got an error in your code it won't compile but if you've got if you made you know some other small mistakes it'll flag up a warning so it'll still compile but it gives you warnings but it's a good idea then to go back and fix the issues that it told you about and then you can also give it a dash o flag so capital o this is used for optimization. And you can 
give it different numbers to give different optimization levels so it's optimizing for speed or optimization optimizing for kind of file size because this dot exe can be quite large especially compared to the main dot cpp file so depending on how much memory you've got maybe in your mac control if you want to optimize the file size there's different levels so you can just do dash 02 for example here and that will optimize that this compilation process dash wall or turn on all warnings as well so this is you know this is basically the command that is used to compile main.cpp into an executable 